Let's talk about building PWAs or progressive web apps with Next.js. What's up everyone. If you're new to the channel, my name is James Q quick and I do weekly videos on web development related topics. And in this video, we're going to talk about building PWAs or progressive web apps with Next.js. Kind of excited for this video because it's actually the first on my new camera. Uh, so I've got a new camera and a new setup. I'm used to looking over here, but that's uh, mainly just exciting for me. You probably don't care. Anyway, uh, the second thing for you to know is that this is a collaboration effort with a member of the Learn, Build, Teach Discord. If you're interested in it, you can find out more info at learnbuildteach.com. Right now, I'll redirect you to the actual Discord. Uh, but Abnish is a member of our Discord, and he's been writing a ton of articles. And he said, what if I write an article and you do a video? And honestly, that's a great deal for me. So I'll have a link to his article below, but we'll go ahead and walk through all the steps in this video as well to set up or create a PWA, a progressive web app in Next.js. But before we dive into the code, let's take a quick look at what PWAs are. Again, it stands for progressive web apps. And the benefit of a progressive web app is it's kind of a hybrid web and native application for your device. So think about your mobile device, like your iPhone or an Android device, or even the desktop I'm on, or I'm on a uh, laptop, but it's a MacBook or Windows, whatever it is, Mac or Windows. So in this case, uh, you can run these as relatively native looking applications. You can have them as separate applications that run uh, seemingly outside of the browser, but they still kind of use the browser behind the scenes, but you get to click on them and open them as individual icons, which is really neat. There's lots of uh, extra features that come with this, like offline support uh, using service workers and a lot of that stuff. We're not going to go super detailed into uh, into what PWAs are. We'll mainly focus on how to create one, but I'll show you a really good example here of a PWA first. So you may not know this, but the Twitter app is actually a mobile or is actually a PWA, which means if I open Twitter, I get this little download icon where I can download Twitter to my machine. So I can install Twitter and then it actually opened on a new, on a different uh, terminal or a different monitor. But here is Twitter on my machine running seemingly outside of the browser. Although if you click on the extensions tab, you can see that it's still kind of running in a browser environment with extensions there, but it's its own thing. So this means if I close this, I can search and open now Twitter just like any other app on my device, on my machine. This is really, really cool. That's a really good example of an amazing PWA that has tons of data and all kinds of cool stuff. So I think that's probably enough. What we should do now is go ahead and take a look at the code. So let's go ahead and dive in. All right, so I'm inside of VS Code. I'm actually using the Midnight Synth theme. So if you like it, you can check out the video I did on it a few weeks ago. But we're gonna start by running an npx command. This allows us to run basically npm commands without installing the package itself. We're gonna use create next app to generate a new next application. And then we'll just name it next PWA demo. So I'll let that run and then we'll come back and open it up and get started. All right, so that looks like it's finished. I'm gonna open this folder up by doing code and then the name of the folder, so this will be P or next PWA demo, but I'm also going to do uh, dash R, which means uh, reuse the current window that we're already open. So I'm gonna open this folder in the instance or window of VS Code that's already open. It's actually one of my favorite tricks. Uh, so we should have a running Next.js application. If you open up your terminal, if you're in VS Code, you can open it there, or if you have a separate terminal, that's fine too. Uh, you should be able to run npm run dev just to start this up and show you that you have a Next.js app running. We don't have anything set up for PWAs yet, but we will go ahead and add that configuration here in a second. So I'm gonna scroll over to my browser and then open up localhost 3000 just to show you that we have a basic Next.js application working, cool. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna actually use this next PWA package. And this is a zero config PWA plugin for Next.js. Uh, it's got about 70,000 downloads and it actually is pretty nice. Uh, so there's not a whole lot of work that we have to do, but we can start by installing this package. So I'm using NPM here. So I'm gonna kill my server, run an NPM install of next-pwa. Now, while that's installing, we're gonna need to generate a manifest uh, file for our application. So the way, uh, the way PWAs work if you, is you have this manifest file with metadata about the application. The browser can then interpret or read that information and use it to kind of uh, figure out what your application name, description, your uh, icons, and a few other things are. So we'll start by doing this. Uh, we'll, none of this stuff is like too uh, too specific right now. So let's do next PWA test 
And then uh, display, we're gonna choose standalone. I had browser by default and that did not work. I'm not exactly sure why, but I uh, wanna make sure we grab standalone here. Description, a cool app. Uh, short name is going to be uh, next. I think PWA test will work as well. That should be fine. And then we wanna upload an icon. All right, so I just went online and found like the most random icon I could find or just like the first one I could find. So I'm gonna upload that. So this is inside of my download folders and it's this 512 icon. So we'll do that and then we'll click the gen generate manifest and this is gonna output uh, a bunch of files for us. We can unzip this and go and see what all is in there. All right, so let me, uh, I'm gonna make this not full screen and then we'll bring this folder over here with this manifest. So you see we have a couple of different copies of those icons, so uh, different versions or different sizes of that same icon. And then we have this manifest uh, dot web manifest. So we'll actually come back to that in a second. But I'm gonna grab all of these files and throw them into the public directory. So this is where uh, this is where the browser will know where to get this information uh, for our application. But we'll need to rename this manifest dot web manifest to manifest dot json because it's actually a json file. So you see those are the same properties that we just worked with. There is uh, colors and display mode. Uh, start URL, the name, the description, the short name, and then a list of all those icons as well. So those being inside of this public directory are accessible to the browser to know what to do with what. Now, the next thing we need to do is actually tell the application where to find uh, this manifest.json file. So even though it's in the public directory, we haven't actually told the application where to look in the public directory to get it. So what we wanna do is go into our pages directory and we have this app, uh, underscore app, which basically wraps all of our different pages. But we also now want to implement the underscore document uh, file in Next.js as well. And this gives us the ability to uh, kind of wrap an entire page, including the head information if we want to. So I'm going to copy in a snippet here. Let me make the uh, this a little bit bigger for us to see the entire thing. And if we scroll up to the top, we're importing these different pieces from uh, Next document, HTML, head, main, and Next script. And uh, you can kind of, uh, you can type all this out or you can go to the blog post to copy the code directly. The main thing that we're clarifying in here is the link to this manifest. So we're saying we're linking to this manifest and it's at slash manifest.json. Now, if you remember, the public directory is publicly accessible inside of a Next.js application and most applications. So that is how we're able to tell the browser to go and get the manifest.json file from this file right here. So we've got those two things connected up. So we can uh, close out the manifest, uh, save the document and close that. And the next thing we'll need to do is actually configure Next.js to use that Next PWA plugin. So Next.js comes with a Next uh, a plugin file, next.config.js. Uh, and we can start by grabbing the with PWA. It looks like I'm not gonna get IntelliSense, but this is, uh, we're gonna require this from Next PWA. So we'll grab this with PWA and it's basically a higher order function where we're gonna wrap this uh, whole export that we, or excuse me, this whole object that we export with this with, uh, not with API, but with PWA. Sorry about that. So with PWA there. And then we're gonna add a PWA uh, configuration object in here. And we'll have the dest, the destination to be public. So where are those files gonna live? They're gonna be in the public directory. Uh, we'll set register to true, and then we'll set skip waiting uh, to true. And you can go and uh, look at all the different configuration options that you have um, inside of the um, the library itself. And there's one also that I wanted to add, uh, which will disable this. Let's see if I can come search for disable. Disable this uh, if we're not uh, in a deployed environment. So if we're running in development, we can go ahead and disable uh, PWAs. And we'll talk about uh, how to test that here in a second. All right, so we'll save that. And let's go ahead and run, uh, let's go ahead and run a build in here. So npm run build, uh, this should take all the configuration and stuff. It should grab the information from the manifest.json. Then it, sh it should actually build this as a PWA. So we'll give this a second to build and then we'll come back and take a look at what we got. All right, so that build has finished. And if we scroll back up, notice it's working with a service worker. This is the sw.js here. So service workers can be used to do like offline access and a bunch of other things with PWAs. So it's working with uh, with that thing. That's that's one signal to let it know that it is actually picking up on the fact that this is a PWA. It did the entire build and then notice that uh, all of these files are going to be static. So uh, Next.js actually gives you a cool little uh, key here of what files are static, uh, server side rendered, uh, and or s static. St <laughs> 
regular static pages, SSG using Git static props, server side rendered with Git server side props, and then uh, you've got incremental static regeneration, which is a whole nother topic. So it looks like that is working. And what we can do is go ahead and run an NPM run start. And this should go ahead and run this in a way that we can be able to test. But I've got the other demo running already. So let me close that one. And now let's do NPM run start. So this should go ahead and start this up. And uh, we should be able to see this in the browser and view it as a PWA, which is actually pretty neat. So let's take a look uh, in the browser here. Let's go back to localhost 3000. And if we refresh this page, uh, notice everything looks the same, but now we have uh, this little button here that says install next PWA. Now this is actually really cool because I can go ahead and install this thing. It went over to a new uh, new terminal or new uh, monitor. Let me bring it over here. So this is the app running as a native Mac app. Now here's the really cool thing. Now, if I do command space, um, I use something called Raycast that replaces like the search, uh, the spotlight stuff in Mac. But if I search in here now for next PWA, that's that application. So I can actually close this. I can search for next PWA. It's gonna open that application on the wrong monitor. Again, of course, let me drag it over. So it's actually opening that as a regular application on Mac. So this is the, the benefit, the beauty of having this uh, is now this is basically looking like a dedicated uh, app on Mac. It's pretty cool stuff, I think. Now, one of the things that happens is when we do that build, uh, notice we have a few different extra files in here that we want to uh, not check those into source code, source control. And the reason is that typically you don't check code into your public directory because you don't, if you need to update them, you don't want them to be cached if they're in the public directory. So we'll usually try to ignore all those. And we've got um, Abnish has come up with um, a set of files inside of here that we can uh, that we can ignore. So we want to ignore uh, service worker, worker stuff, uh, basically all the worker stuff here. So depending on uh, what sort of build it does, we want to make sure we just ignore all of those files and don't check them in. So we'll just save that. And now notice that these couple of files are now grayed out. So we make sure that those won't go uh, in a deployment to our uh, to our deployed version, it will be built real time and then those files will be generated and inside of the public directory. All right, so that's the basics of setting up a PWA, a progressive web app with Next.js. If you're interested in learning more and you need more resources, one, go check out the article by Abnish if you're looking for just the written form. But also I've done a little bit of research for you in terms of videos. Uh, there's a video here from Max Programming or Uzman who is part of our Learn, Build, Teach Discord as well on setting up a Next.js app PWA with offline support as well. So he gets into offline support, which I think is worth checking out. And then also on the Fireship channel, which is one of the most amazing channels on YouTube, uh, they have a progressive web apps in 100 seconds and beyond. So they do the 100 second thing and then give you a little bit of hands-on portion after that. Anyways, if you enjoyed the video and you'd like to see me do more content from other people transformed into videos, let me know what sort of topics you might be interested in. Hope you enjoyed it. In the meantime, I'll catch you next time.